So about eight years ago now, I had what I at the time considered to be my great insight into physics and my great insight into how gravity works. And I still believe that I've made a valuable contribution to that field of human endeavor. I still believe that my idea is correct. Um, it's not entirely my idea. There's various other people all around the internet and in the research communities themselves who have come up with similar ideas to this. It's not an entirely unique idea, but the idea is basically that a gravitational field is an electron density that's surrounding all massive objects such as stars, planets, galaxies, and so on. We find this cloud of ephemeral tunneling electrons which um, tunnel into near the nucleus of other atoms, drawing other atoms towards them because electrons being negatively charged attract positively charged protons in the nuclei of other atoms and crucially reflect and trap light in these huge electron clouds. And um, that's still what I believe about gravity. I still believe that gravity is mediated by electrons tunneling all around the universe. and. Um, I think it fits very well with observation. Um, I think it makes a lot more sense out of the universe being a rather simple model than something like string theory does, which is a very um, abstruse, esoteric, uh, obscure kind of mathematized, bit of very possibly gibberish, who knows, that um, has attained the, the kind of the, the mainstream approval within theoretical physics. And I don't like that so much because it makes um, the topic very, very inaccessible. I think that the the ultimate theory of gravity is likely to be very uh, understandable, really. And I think that I, the idea that I've come up with is very understandable and very easy to understand and very instrumental as well and helps us to explain a lot of phenomena in nature, such as dark matter and dark energy. And um, all these sorts of things. But um, I put out a video uh, earlier this year saying I was going to withdraw from the study of quantum gravity and give up on quantum gravity and give up on my idea. And um, I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. I think I'm going to continue with it. And I think I'm eventually going to write a book about it. Because, I mean, if nothing else, I've learned a huge amount about physics during this endeavor. Um, I've been wrong on many occasions, but, you know, it's by our blunders that we learn, is it not? And um, I think it's certainly worth putting a book out there just for anyone to read it, because I think it will help people understand physics a lot better. I think it makes sense of the world. I think um, if we're looking at black holes, for instance, with these huge shrouds of trapped radiation around them. We know from general relativity that gravitational fields trap light, but we need some sort of quantum mechanism in there, in a model of quantum gravity, to be able to explain that fully. So we need to invoke, I think, probably electrons to understand why light's trajectory around an object is modified, for instance. And I think the only reason why I really gave up on the idea was because I received too much hate for it on the internet, too many snarky, horrible comments, too many arguments with randomers online about physics stuff, where they frankly don't know enough about physics to argue with me, and all this sort of stuff, and I, I ended up hating it. I ended up hating the experience of being this kind of uh, rogue thinker, I guess, operating in the wilderness, which is what I am. And I kind of tried to sideline myself more into writing and stand-up comedy again and focus on those things, which maybe is even a good idea, but I love physics so much. So I decided to keep this idea going, to keep going with it. And um, the more and more I've looked into it, the more and more I continue to think that I'm right, the more and more I continue to think that this is the right approach to gravity. And um, it's again, it's not it's not only my idea, and it's not just not, I mean, Paul Dirac, with his idea of a Dirac sea and the whole conjecture, got tantalizingly close to this idea. And then the, this idea of a Dirac sea and the whole conjecture was revived in the early two thousands by the German mathematician Felix Finster and his idea of causal thermion systems that I've read up on. And he's gotten tantalizingly close to the correct answer, if not to the correct answer. And there's all sorts of papers out there trying to explain gravity in terms of van der Waals forces, which yet again is tantalizingly close to the correct answer. 
the correct model for quantum gravity. And um, that stuff, yeah, is incredibly valuable research also and um, shines a great light of truth onto a very obscure and opaque problem and a problem in which, you know, not everybody has insight into it. And I think when you get insight into it, it's a valuable thing to share that. And it's a valuable thing to explain things in science to people that, um, you know, that might not be explainable otherwise, or just try and give people an access to understanding that they don't get everywhere. Because what's coming out of the major academic circles when it comes to theoretical physics on this subject, on the subject of quantum gravity, is basically just string theory and loop quantum gravity. And loop quantum gravity as well is not so far away from the right answer as string theory is. But people get hooked on this idea of extra dimensions, I think, and um, particles being strings and the extra dimensions being wrapped up really small so we can't detect them ever. And it's starting to edge out of the areas of what is really testable and what is hence really scientific. And um, in my idea, it truly is scientific, since there's no, a, a load of different ways you can test for it. Um, you can try liberating electrons from the background, which I believe you can do in particle accelerator experiments. And um, then there's the muon G minus two factor, the G factor of the muon, which I believe is also a sort of experimental test of quantum gravity. Um, and there's other ways of doing this as well. You could have neutrino detectors in space, because in this model, neutrinos wouldn't be affected by gravity other than in their flavor oscillations. So the trajectory of a neutrino, for instance, uh, wouldn't be augmented by the presence of the sun. So we can put a neutrino detector uh, between Uranus and Neptune, for instance, to try and detect a neutrino wind coming off the sun. If there is a neutrino wind coming off the sun, I'm in the wrong and I have to sit in the corner and wearing a funny hat and that there is something far more uh, mysterious going on in nature so far as gravity is concerned. But um, yes, as basic quantum of space time, the electron makes a huge amount of sense for that really, since we know that electrons readily interact with light. This is one of the major things, this explains all sorts of things, it explains the vacuum energy of the universe for instance, why the vacuum isn't just a vacuum and um, it seems to be a kind of a sea of particles that um, uh, uh, photons are emitted by space seemingly spontaneously but I would explain that by merely it being the, um, the tunneling of electrons around the universe liberating photons into the background causing photons to uh, pop up where they otherwise wouldn't be and um yeah explaining it that way <laughs> um so yeah i think that this idea has a great amount of instrumentality and i think it explains a huge amount about nature um you can look on my channel for more videos obviously of me explaining the various facets of nature and unexplained problems in physics which are explained by this line of thinking this line of inquiry and everything in my mind at least well in, yeah in my mind at least it seems to line up quite neatly with um the problems as it stands the outstanding problems such as dark matter dark energy and so on which i won't cover in this video but i'll leave you to mull over what i've said and hopefully get back to me with some nice comments <laughs> sharing your ideas and not being nasty and horrible like so many people have actually about this which has just been trying actually and maybe um, exasperated with everything and put out and miserable and dumbfounded very often by people's stupidity ignorance or small-mindedness pig-headedness arrogance very often and disingenuousness sometimes so thank you for watching i love you lots i'll see you soon bye